Hello guys, welcome to another integral video. Today we're going to be checking out this awesome method, uh, method of integration known as Ramanujan's Master Theorem. It's named after the Indian mathematician Ramanujan, incredibly brilliant, incredibly famous. Um, he created thousands and thousands of theorems, some of which we still can't prove today uh, with very minimal education. Uh, so basically what this theorem says is if our function f of x has an expansion uh, that takes this form where the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of phi of n negative x to the n over n factorial. Then the integral of x to the s minus 1 times f of x dx from 0 to infinity, um, this is known as the Mellon transform of f of x, is equal to gamma of s phi of negative s. So one thing we have to say is, of course, phi of n has to be a well-defined continuous function. We can't just say, okay, well, I'm going to state that my function phi of n is going to take on so-and-so values for positive numbers and for negative numbers it's always going to be zero so this integral always goes to zero obviously we can't do that and the other thing is that we have to know that the integral converges because sometimes it'll give us a value here even though the integral itself does not converge so let's go ahead and check out some problems that can be tackled using this awesome method of integration so the first integral we're going to be taking on is the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x to the n now first, let's discuss the convergence. Now, for n, for n equals 1, obviously this is going to diverge because it's going to oscillate infinitely. For n is less than 1, we're going to see a similar thing. Um, as, n, as x gets bigger, the sine curve is going to kind of slow down and it's going to get bigger and just take longer to oscillate. And so what that means is that our integral is going to diverge because we're adding up bigger and bigger amounts. But in the case of n is greater than 1, we can see that um, the sine curve is going to quote unquote speed up as x gets bigger and it's going to oscillate faster and faster and faster and faster and eventually once it oscillates like this um, that's not really adding any area and so we're adding up smaller and smaller amounts so this will converge so we have to write here n is greater than one all right now the next thing to do is we now have to um, just convert this into a form that can that convert this into the Mellon transform form. The next thing we have to do is we have to take this and change it into a form where we can apply Ramanujan's master theorem. So the first thing we're going to do, x to the n equals t, which means that x equals t to the 1 over n, and dx equals 1 over n t to the 1 over n minus 1 uh, dt. So we have 1 over n integral from 0 to infinity of t to the 1 over n minus 1 sine of t dt. So this is in the form of the Mellon transform here. We have our uh, t to the 1 over n minus 1. That's t to the s minus 1 times sine of t dt. And now all we have to do is figure out what phi of n is. So if we look at our expansion for sine of x, this is what it's going to be. So if we write out the first few terms, I'm going to leave some spaces here and you'll see why in a moment, this is going to look like this. We have t minus t cubed over 3 factorial plus t to the fifth over 5 factorial. So what this means is what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to fill in the quote unquote missing terms that are here. I'm going to add plus 0 t squared over 2 factorial and plus 0 t to the fourth over 4 factorial. Now we need to figure out what is our phi of n, and, and, or what's multiplied by negative t to the n over n factorial, which is giving us these values. Now you can see our factorial is already there, and we do have some alternating negative signs. So let's figure out, oh, also I should say plus 0 t to the 0. That's also in that expansion there. So let's figure out what our phi of n is going to be. So first of all, for n equals 0, phi of n is 0 because we have no t to the 0 term. So for n equals 0, phi of n is 0. Then for n equals 1, phi of n is going to be negative 1 because if phi of n was 1, then we would have a negative t term, but we have a positive t term. And then for n equals 2, it's just 0 again. For n equals 3, it's going to be a positive 1 because we have that negative sign that we wanted. And it's going to just keep going like that. 
So we have to ask ourselves, what function is going to take on these values and continue on infinitely? And of course, that function is just going to be sine of negative pi over 2 n. So if you look at that, that should make sense, right? 0, negative 1, 0, 1. You can go ahead and check that those values are going to match. And this is the same. We could also say negative sine of pi over 2 n. So now all that's left is we have to plug this into our formula. So this integral is going to equal 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n times phi of negative 1 over n. So that's just going to be sine of pi over 2n. And that's actually our answer. That's it. Now, if we want to go ahead and plug in a special case here, so the ca for the case n equals 2, this becomes the Fresnel integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared dx. And this is going to become 1 half. Uh, gamma of 1 half is just square root pi. And then we have sine of pi over 4, which is square root 2 over 2, or 1 over square root 2. So this is going to become um, 1 over square root 2. So this is going to become square root pi over square root 8, or square root pi over 8. Now we can go ahead and let's see what our next integral is. So this is a very similar situation. I'm going to do this one a bit faster since this is almost the same exact thing. Um, it's going to be the same convergence for n is greater than 1. Okay, so now let's think about, now let's work on trying to find phi of n. So we're going to fill in the first few terms. 1 minus t squared over 2 factorial plus t to the fourth over 4 factorial. So if we fill in our quote-unquote missing terms, it's going to be 0t over 1 factorial and plus 0t cubed over 3 factorial. So phi of n is going to be, for the first one, it's just 1. Then it goes to 0. Then it's going to go to um, negative 1 because um, for the case of 2, it should have a positive sign, but it has a negative sign. And then it's going to 0 and then positive 1 again. So this function, in case you haven't noticed, it's pretty sim similar. It's going to be cosine of pi over 2 n. So if we go ahead and plug that into our formula, we're going to get that this integral equals 1 over n gamma of 1 over n times, um, and when we plug in cosine of negative pi over, pi over 2 n, uh, cosine of negative anything is the same as cosine of anything, so we're just going to leave it as that. Also, I want to mention the n is in the bottom here because we have this 1 over n rather than just normal n. Okay, and if we plug in our, so this is our answer, and again, if we plug in n equals 2, we get the Fresnel integral and we'll get the same result, pi square root of pi over 8. All right, let's take a look at some other integrals. All right, so this is a pretty common type of integral that we're going to see. Now, first of all, I want to discuss the convergence. We're going to be talking about n is greater, or actually, we're going to be talking about n greater than or equal to 2. I'm sure there's some convergent uh, series, there's some convergent situations where n is not greater than or equal to 2, but we're just going to look at those cases. And the other thing we need to do is we need to do that k is less than n minus 1. Because otherwise, if k equaled n, n minus 1, then we could do some situation where the integral would just be the natural log of 1 plus x to the n over n, and it would diverge. But anything less than that, and it'll converge. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say x to the n equals t. And as I showed before in all the other slides, dx equals 1 over n, t to the 1 over n minus 1 dt. And if we go ahead and plug this in, we're now going to have 1 over n, the integral from 0 to infinity. And instead of x to the k, we're going to have t to the k over n over 1 plus t times t to the 1 over n minus 1. So we're just going to add plus 
or actually I'll do it like this, I'll do dt. Okay, so this is just the Mellon transform um, of 1 over 1 plus t. So if we look at our series expansion, some of you may know the series expansion for 1 over 1 plus t. This is going to be just uh, negative 1 to the n, t to the n, right? So that's just uh, 1 minus t plus t squared minus t cubed, etc., etc., etc. So in this case, our phi of n, this looks pretty much correct. But the other thing that's missing is we don't have an n factorial in the bottom. So in that case, phi of n is going to be n factorial. And in this case, we're going to use um, gamma of n plus 1 because that makes more sense. So if we go ahead and plug in our definition here, we're going to get that this integral equals 1 over n gamma of k plus 1 over n times phi of uh, phi, so this is just going to be gamma of 1 minus k plus 1 over n, right? And if we use Euler's reduction formula here, or I'm sorry, not reduction, reflection formula here, we will get that this is equal to pi over n cosecant of k plus 1 over n. So we could go ahead and plug in some cases here, but I'm just going to leave it here as this general formula. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this one. It's already in the form of the Mellon transform, so the only thing we have to do is um, figure out what our phi of n is. So we're going to just take this directly. This is going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the n, over n, and just a negative sign in front of all that. And so if we convert this into an easier form, this is just going to be negative sum of negative x, to the n over n. And to just make this a little bit easier, we'll just convert this right into the form that we need for Romano Jones Master Theorem. So we're going to multiply by the top and bottom by n factorial. So this is the part that's already included, which means that this is our phi of n. Phi of n equals n factorial over n. Uh, we could simplify this to n minus 1 factorial, but that's going to make things more difficult later. So we'll just write this as um, gamma of n plus 1 over n. And let's go ahead and plug that into our formula. So we're going to get this is equal to gamma of s times gamma of 1 minus s all over negative s. And so we can use Euler, Euler's refractor reflection formula again. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no negative uh, s because we forgot about this negative sign from earlier. So this is actually negative here, negative here. So this is not negative s, this is positive s. If we use Euler's reflection formula here, we're going to get this is equal to pi over s cosecant of pi s. That's our answer. All right. I hope you guys like this video. I absolutely love this integration method. It doesn't really come up much, but in the few cases that it does, it's just so powerful and it feels so great to use. You can take such huge shortcuts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.